Alright guys, well, this is Aaron Squire again, and I'm going to do a uh, RPG dev blog of sorts. So this week, Happy Father's Day first off, and we've got a bunch of maps had to get done. So this is the final map for Darkshire that I put together. This is going to be mostly a combat area, so there's going to be a lot of like wandering monster type things in here. Um, so this, this is what I worked on most of the week. Unfortunately this week... I basically came to a point where I decided that it would be best if I just um, kind of moved away from having a team, so I've gone back to having this be a solo effort, which is fine. Um, sometimes you have to make those decisions, and I also wanted to make it so this way if members on the team want to submit an RPG, they still have two weeks to put something together, so I, I wanted to make sure to do that. So this is Darkshire, and there were a couple of buildings that I required myself to have in here as a, uh, because of my uh, Dungeons & Dragons module. So we definitely needed this cathedral over here, uh, so I made that nice and big inside. And I'm not sure exactly right now, there's going to be like a basement area to it that's going to be a secret. I'm not sure how the players are going to find that right now, but, um, but you know, I, I can always make that pretty easily. It's not going to be that big. Uh, so, because they, they're already going to go through this large combat area. Let's see. So, temple. Oh, I did make a, I did make a basement. Yeah, that's right. So, I did make the basement underneath. Um, this is going to be where that gelatinous cube is going to be, and uh, you know, Azrael won't be down here. But if they, if the NPC, if the players do find this, they'll go come down here, find the gelatinous cube, fight it, and then Azrael will talk about it being his pet that he raised. Uh, and so, back up to the, the temple portion. You know, that's pretty nice. I made it look like a cross. A lot of the old classic temples uh, were actually designed like this with the two wings, and I made the uh, actual picture of it on the overworld or on the Darkshire map kind of look like it could have a cross on it. I didn't put extra roof behind it, but, you know, you could kind of imagine that. Uh, the armory here looked pretty good. I had some problems trying to figure out how I wanted to do this little jail cell. You can also see it's on the corner of the... Uh, the uh, wall there so it does look like it's kind of on the corner and we get a staircase that goes on top of the wall of Darkshire. Uh, the town hall was sitting in the back of another one. I, I kind of tried to make these make sure they were modeled after the uh, the exteriors again. On the left side here would maybe be where all the clerks were working and that type of thing. Of course most of these areas are going to be, there's, they're all going to be deserted. They're all going to have like you know undead wandering around them because the whole town is basically deserted of course except for the armory which will have uh, one survivor, which is going to be freaked out when he when the uh, party finally gets in here. But you know, pretty interesting. There's really, I guess, uh, this would be like a uh, food area. This would, I, I guess, I didn't really make a, a mayor's office in here, but um, you know, you could imagine that maybe he would hang out like right here. I guess something like that. It's not, you know, it's not going to be crazy upscale. It's just, you know, this little small town. Uh, this is the inn that I d developed. I, I put two wings on this one. Uh, I was actually pretty proud of the room, the exterior of this room, so, you know, kind of like the upscale rooms on this side, and then the low-scale rooms on this side of the inn. Um, the trade house, not too much to say here. This is going to be just basically like, you know, some sort of a shop type of thing. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and look at the inn. The inn is over here on the left side, you're going to see, and, you know, I, I went ahead and just took the tile set and just kind of made it bigger, made it um, taller, so you can see the left and the right side there. Um, let's see, and then I, I went ahead and made a mountain that the uh, players are going to have to traverse over. Uh, this took some time, I went ahead and put a parallax background in the in the background, and um, I, I had a real hard time at the beginning making the mountain portion uh, for the game. Actually, you know, put a little wa waterfall in here. This guy's like a little sleeping fisherman, which he's going to talk to you about trying to catch fish. Of course, I'm not going to spend the time to make uh, fishing available before this project's over, but in the future I might try to do some sort of fishing script for this portion. Um, that's pretty much it for the mountain portion. And then I went ahead and make this, made this forest, which uh, it would be best if I just zoomed out. So I, I wanted to make this forest like have like different portions of it where if the player wandered to try to get out it would just reset it would just go to the beginning of the forest so I did do that so the only way out of the forest is this down here um, but everything else like it kind of loops back which you wouldn't necessarily know um, so and then of course there's this one choke point where they're gonna get attacked by these bandits here um, which will uh, you know 
which might make them think that that's part of what's going on with Darkshire, but it's really not related. So kind of a little bit of misdirection there. On top of that, I had to go back through the whole game and scrub all the text and all the characters because they're still treating it as if the temples have all been stolen from. So I had to go through every single map and scrub everybody's text. And basically what I did with a lot of them, um, you'll see, like with this guy, is I created a switch that says... It says Act 2 on. Um, so when once Act 2 starts, that switch gets turned on. And the way RPG Maker works is the topmost page, so the farthest deep page, if that one is switched on, that's the one that takes precedent. And then none of the other pages even get looked at. So like for this guy, it's just going to make him disappear. Um, if I go inside the temple interior, this is the guy you used to talk to to start the event. And instead, it's just going to give you some text uh, when our Act 2 is turned on. So pretty interesting there. Another problem I had recently was inside the world itself. So I, I did do this somewhat unique thing, I thought. I wanted to create uh, monsters for the player to see before they battled. So random battles have gone away. I've gone away from that in the game. And what I did was I came in here and I created uh, basically conditional. Uh, so this page won't be turned on, so it'll do this one first. It'll simply wait 600 frames and then it's going to turn itself switch A on which will make this uh, monster spawn and then you go down and do the battle processing for it. You always want to make sure that you have uh, can escape is turned on when you're creating battle processing for these little dudes and it's, it's linked to the battle for the hornets and then you need to come down here and say erase event uh, that's, and you want to do that after the branch is over actually you need to put that way actually this one's not a good example let's go down this one's a little bit better example this one's rats so you could put it on both the wind condition and the escape but to save yourself some time you can just put it down here on a race event copy the event to multiple things and then just change the graphics um, to multiple different uh, types of um, monsters if that's what you want to do but you want to have a race event what I originally tried to do was the wrong thing I did what was it called? I did exit event processing and all that's going to do is stop the event and but it'll still remain and, it, and you can still click on it. We don't want that. We want the event to disappear after the uh, player has engaged it and we still want it to reappear when the player starts the map over so they can grind experience if they want to. So that's how I did all the monsters in the game. So I redid all the monsters again started working on the gelatinous cube. I don't have that to show you right now. Um, it's not the best shape anyways. But I feel a little bit behind, uh, mostly because I tried to, to go with a team. So if anybody out there is trying to put together a team for RPG Maker, what I would say suggest to you is before you start to do anything with video games or put together a team, have somebody maybe do a solo project first or have them do something for you and turn it around in maybe like three days and tell them if they don't get that done in three days, they're basically off the team. And, and don't do it in a harsh way, but um, I think that's the best way to go because I basically got nothing from any of my members in two weeks. Uh, I got one thing from one of my members and it just didn't work out and I had to uh, redo some of that work. But, um, you know, it just it's going to save you a lot of heartache in the, in the long run. And it's, you know, just like um, Chris DeLeon says, it's it's free projects, so it's, it shouldn't be too heartbreaking for people to, you know, it's not like houses are on the line or money or other things like that. So that would be my big suggestion there. But that's pretty much what I, where I'm at this week. I'm in a good spot to finish, hopefully on time. Hopefully I can finish this week-ish. And by finish, I mean get all of the, they've already got a lot of the triggers built in where I, I made a transition to episode two here or that's what's going to happen after the seaside meeting with the uh, the bad guy. And it'll take you to the barracks. I also created a big script. Actually, I'll show you that real quick before I, I, I uh, end this. But it takes you in here, and this guy suggests, and all kinds of people in the, in the town suggest basically going west to Darkshire to figure out what's wrong with the trade routes there. So they, you know, a lot of things are going to tell the player to go that direction without us having to be too overt and give them a direct quest to do that. Um, but here's all the players' uh, dudes. And what I did was, if I come in here to the database, I can't remember if I, I don't think I showed this last week. So what I did was, I come down here, I made this uh, common event called Party Control. I created a variable ca called Party of Four. 
and set it to zero. Then I add plus one, depending on how, um, depending on for each player's um, group member, I, I add plus one to it. So I add one to that. Once it gets to five, um, it will be, or actually four or greater, it will execute this at the bottom. If it's less than that, it will it will exit the event processing um, down here somewhere. Basically, it won't it won't do it. It won't just loop infinitely. So. I come down here, and then what I did was uh, notify the player your your party has exceeded the four party uh, member limit, and so you need to make sure you you need to select someone to go to the barracks. This is kind of clunky because it would have been better to have a, the player actually select the player the uh, the dude that they want, but in, I couldn't figure out how to do that. So instead, what I did was I created choices for each one. So it's always going to look at like Brenda first and say, "Do you want to send her to the?" Um, barracks and you say no if you say yes then it'll exit processing if you say no then it'll go on to the next one and the next party member it will never ever let you get rid of your main character which is which is important because he does all of the um, text for the game he, he goes ahead and tells you all the different things for the game so um, until next time this is Eric Squire signing off saying God bless you and your families and trying to rage too much out there